On to the next set of questions, question 9. In a class, 60% of the students are girls and the rest are boys. Uh, there are 30 more girls than boys. If 68% of the students, including 30 boys, pass an exam and all of that, then the percentage of girls who do not pass, right? So these are the questions in arithmetic where you read quickly. You're not going to get too much sense. You need to go sentence by sentence, right? You're reading. Uh, speed has to be slow. Uh, you got to start taking certain notes, right? But you can't do the take the notes like you do it in school. Uh, so you need to understand the structure. What do we have? We have girls here and boys and we have uh, passing an exam and not passing. That's it. There we get the structure. So let's bring in the girls here and boys in this column. And we have yes, passing and those who do not pass all right do not pass they are not passing okay uh, 60 percent of the students are girls the rest are boys 60 percent is nothing but three fifth over here uh, we can say three x are girls which means we have two x as boys there are 30 more girls and boys um, what's the difference between the girls and boys 3x minus 2x which is 1x so if x equals 30 then 3 times 30 is going to be 90 and you get 60 over here you can quickly get that right so 90 and 60 uh, that's what makes sense right 3 is to 2 ratio 60 percent of the total 150 as well as 30 being the difference between girls and boys we are done with the first two sentences if 68 percent of the students including 30 boys pass an examination that means passing is 30 boys for sure 68 percent of the total students and what is 68 by 100 into 150 you should be able to get it as 3 by 2 and you get a 34 and 34 threes are 102 We're done 72 over here the percentage of the girls who do not pass the exam the difference over here 18 percentage of the girls total girls is 90 of 90 how many are 18 18 by 90 is one fifth that comes to 20 percent all right should not even be using those i mean writing those steps down in case you do elementary stage here yeah, where the basic level of prep yeah do that, but over time, look to get rid of that and get this 20% by observing, right? Tables comes in handy over here. Make use of the speed math modules at Mocat. Yeah, let's move to the next one. Question 10. In an examination, the score of A was 10% less than that of B. Okay, A and B are linked, but A is 10% less than B. So if I know B, I can find A. Uh, B was 25% more than C. If I know C, I can find B. And C was something of D, right? If I know D, I can find C. So it looks like it's working backwards, but A score is given, I need to find D score. The rest are all in percentage terms and one absolute value over here, um, that's it. We should be able to straight understand that we need to use index over here, right? You need to understand the reasons why we are adopting, right? Not just the method which I'm showing over here, but why, what's the thought process behind it, right? The actual score we know, which is 72 over here for A and we need to find that for D. Uh, but what's being done over here is um, A is given in terms of 10% less than B. So if I know B, I can find A, right? So from this, I can find this, from this, I can find this, from this, I can find this. So I need to start at D. Let's assume that to be 100 and work backwards. C was 20% less than D. C is 20% less than D. What is 20% or one fifth less than this? 80, obvious. And then 25%. B was 25% or one fourth more than 80. One fourth of 80 is 20. 20 more than 80 is 100 itself, right? Get rid of the steps as much as you can. 10% less than B is 90 itself. Now, if 90 is 70 to 100 is how much? You can cross multiply and divide by 90, right? Which is 100 into 72 by 90. You can do that. We've seen this in the previous video. Um, you get rid of this and you get an 80 over here. That's one way to do it. And you get the answer as 80. Another quick way is also wherein we just try to understand the uh, ratio between these two 90 and 72 divide by 9 and you get 10 is to 8 um, if 10 parts is uh, over here in the index is 8 in actual value 100 is what 10 into 10 so do an 8 into 10 and you get an 80 the same ratio holds good index to actual should have the same ratio everywhere and that's it All right let's move to the next question in 2010, a library contained a total of 11,500 books in two categories, fiction and non-fiction. Fine. In 2015, the library contained a total of 12,760 books in these two categories. Okay. Uh, during this period, there was 10% increase in the fiction category, 
while there was 12% increase in the non-fiction. Okay. So what do we have over here? We have the 2010 uh, total given to us, right? And we have fiction over here and we have non-fiction. Now the total over here in 2010 is given to us and that is 11,500. Now in 2015, we are told that, you know, there is a growth of 10% and 12% in the fiction and non-fiction, right? This grew by 10% and this grew by 12%. In actual terms, we are given 12,760, right? Now, what can we conclude? Should this growth have been 10%, 12% or between these two, right? What is the minimum it should have been? The minimum growth over here is definitely 10% because both categories grew by 10%, right? What is 10% of 11,500? If both grew by 10%, this should also have grown by 10%, right? 11,500 plus 10 percent of it, right? Which is 1150, right? 10 percent of 11,500 would have come to uh, 12,650. But in reality, it's not 12,650, it's extra 110, right? 12,760 it is. Where is this 110 coming from for 12,760? And that is nothing but the additional 2%. This is 2% of, right, so non-fiction. 2% of non-fiction is this extra 110. Think about it again. If fiction and non-fiction would have grown by 10%, overall is also 10%, it should have been 12,650. However, it is actually extra 110, and that extra is coming from the extra 2% for the non-fiction books alone. So 110 over here, the extra 110 is the extra 2% of non-fiction, so if 2% is 110, then 1% 1 is 55, 100% over here is 5,500, which means non-fiction over here is 5,500. We found that, right? The, from the additional 2%, we can quickly get this. We don't even need a calculator over here. 11,500 minus 5,500 is giving us 6,000, right? As the fiction books, what do we need to find? How many fiction books were in the library, not in 2010? in 2015, that's 10% more than 6,000 and comes to 6,600. Option three is the answer here. In a group of people, 28% of the members are young while the rest are old. 65% of the members are literates and yeah, so clearly there's, we have young, we have old, we have literates, we have um, illiterates, right? So that's it. We can straight go in for a table of form over here. Um, you can go in for old, you can go in for young, you can go in for the literates and the illiterates. Uh, certain questions you can straight up form the table by looking at it, right? Um, in a group, 28% of the members are young, right? Um, of the total, let us say we have um, 100 people, 28 are gonna be um, young, the remaining 72 are gonna be old. 65% of the members are uh, literates, right? Of the 65 are on the literate side, the remaining 35 are illiterates and 25% of the literates are young. 25% of the literates, one fourth of this, right? Uh, so one fourth of this is gonna get into decimals, but it's fine at this stage. What is one fourth of 64? That's 16. And then one fourth of one, the remaining one, that's 0.25. Um, sorry, but this is supposed to be for young, right? So literates, young, 16.25 is what we get over here. Uh, what's the remainder? That's 48.75, okay? Uh, the percentage of old people among the illiterates, right? Among the illiterates of 35, what percentage are gonna be the old people? 72 minus 48 is 24. 24 minus 0.75 is 23.25. And that's it, 23.25 by 35 into 100%. We need to figure out what this is closest to. We can get rid of the decimal point over here because we have two zeros which we are multiplying. 2, 3, 2, 5 by 35 can divide by 5 or you can just simply use the uh, calculator over here. All right at this point, 465 by 7, uh, 6 sevens are 42. We are left with 45 and then a 6 again and then a 3 by 7, 66, 3 by 7 percent. Option 4 is the closest. In May, John bought the same amount of rice and the same amount of wheat as he had bought in April but spent rupees 150 more due to price increase of rice okay and wheat by 20% uh, and 12% respectively okay some price increase has happened um, yeah that's it straight up again to the first part I think we can draw a table um, we know uh, April 
and we know there is an increase which has happened and we know there is a may over here and um, yeah uh, so rice and wheat okay uh, he spent 150 more so there's a plus 150 which has happened over here uh, rice and wheat went up by 20 percent and 12 percent okay um, I shall come back to that uh, if John had spent 450 on rice in April on rice spent uh, 450 over here in April uh, then how much did he spend on wheat in May? I need to find this, right? What else do I know over here? He had bought the same amount of rice and the same amount of wheat as he had bought in April, right? The quantity remained the same. It's only because of the uh, price increase over here. But rice over here has gone up by 20%, uh, which is one-fifth. That's a one-fifth of 450, which comes to a plus 90. 12% over here. Uh, what is that going to be? Plus 60 if 12% is 60, 12% of what? 12% of this. And this therefore has to be 100%, the total. 12 into what is 60? 12 fives are 60. Then 100 fives are 500. They should all be in the same ratio. So only then 12% of 500 is coming to 60. You don't even need to use variables and all of that. Just note down the percentage value for this particular cell. 12% of what? This. So therefore this becomes 100%. 12 into what is 60 or find the ratio 1 is to 5, apply the same over here and you've got the value. Uh, what's asked over here is how much do you spend on wheat in May and that comes to 500 plus 60 which comes to 560. Option 4 is the answer here. In the final examination, Bishnu scored 52% and Asha scored 64%. Fine. The marks obtained by Bishnu is 23 less and that by Asha is 34 more than the marks obtained by a middle person. Another standard type of question which keeps coming up. We saw something like this a few years back. I think the 2017 or 18 papers, right, in the previous video. There's another standard type which keeps coming up every two to three years, right, should be knowing this. Can't be using variables and going through a long drawn out process, right. So we need to note down Asha is at 64%. Uh, we have B over here at 52%. And in between we have this person, um, R, right, uh, who's um, Ramesh, okay. And what's the difference in the marks over here? Marks obtained by Bishnu is 23 less. 23 less than Ramesh. That by Asha is 34 more. And what can I immediately say? The difference in the marks between A and B is going to be 34 plus 23, 57. Right? One is 34 more than R. The other is 23 less than R. The difference is 57. The sum combined. And this 57 is the same in what? Uh, in percentage terms, 64 minus 52. 12% of the total, 64 minus 52. The marks obtained by Geeta who scored 84% is what? Right. Somebody scored 84%, we need to find out the marks. From 12, how do, we get, how do we get to 84 into 7? From 57, how do we get to whatever the marks it is? Multiply with 7, that's it. Um, 50 into 7 is 350, uh, 49 here, so 399 is the total. Option 3 is the answer here. Identical chocolate pieces are sold in boxes of two sizes, small and large. The large box is sold for twice the price of the small box. Okay. The selling price per gram of chocolate um, in the large box is 12% less than that in the small box. Okay. There's too much of data over here, right? If you're reading it, you, what you need to do is form some sort of structure, start taking down notes or clues, and then we'll see where it's going, right? Which direction it's heading. Large small right okay um, two sizes we are done till here the large box is sold for twice the price of the small box okay uh, the price per box right this is going to be twice that of the small box uh, if this is a this is going to be 2a um, what can i also do i can also use um, um, an absolute value if need be right uh, because percentage is what is asked. So, I mean, anything is fine, right? So, we can also take it as 200 over here and 100 over here. Uh, fine. Uh, but only one value can be assumed. No? We can't do a second one. Now, if the selling price per gram of chocolate in the large box is 12% less than that in the small box. Okay. Selling price per gram is going to be what? Right? Selling price per gram over here. Um, this is going to be 12% less than this. So if this is going to be, we can once again take it as, you know, rupees 1 because this is in relative terms. 
um, and the grammage is not asked, all right? So this will therefore become 0.88, or you can use a variable, they'll all get cancelled, all right? Uh, rupees 0.88 per gram, and this is rupees 1 per gram, all right? Because in the selling price per gram in the large box is 12% less than this, okay? Um, then the percentage by which the weight of the chocolate in the large box exceeds that of the small. What's the weight over here? This is price per box. This is selling price per um, gram, right? So this is also selling price per box. How do I find out the weight per box? That is, I need to find gram per box, right? What weight it is. To get gram per box is nothing but the top one divided by bottom. Look at what happens. If I have SP per box divided by SP per gram, it's going to become SP per box into gram by SP and that gets cancelled. Units, we get gram per box and that's what we want. So top by bottom, 200 by 0.88 and here we get 100 by 1 which is 100 itself, keep it as it is. Um, we need to find out by how much um, the large exceeds that of small, right? And in percentage terms. So what is 200 by 0.88, uh, can divide by 8, we get a uh, 25 uh, divided by 0.11 or 2500 by 11, right? Let me keep it at that. So you can just find a 2500 divided by 11, right? And you get the value 227.27, right? So this comes to 227.27 or you can also divide and get the value, leave it to you. By how much percent is it more than this? It's obvious, it's 127 percent, right? We have kept this as 100. So therefore, the increase is, the additional portion is 127.27 divided by that of the small box into 100 percent. This gets cancelled and you get 127.27. A box has 450 balls, each either white or black. There being as many metallic white balls as metallic black balls. Both of them are equal. If 40% of the white balls and 50% of the black balls are metallic and so on and so forth and the number of non-metallic, okay, too much over here again. But what we can immediately conclude at this point is uh, most of these percentage questions we end up forming a table, right? So we have white, we have black, we have metal, or metallic and we have non-metallic balls or the other way around, right? Leave that to you. Grand total is 450 each either white or black there being as many metallic white balls as metallic black balls metallic white is equal to metallic black 40 percent of the white of the total 40 percent of that and 50 percent of the black are metallic right they belong to this that means let the total be w and b right 40 percent of the white so 0.4 w equals 50 percent of the black we can get rid of the points over here. What is W by B? That's in the ratio of 5 is to 4. So this is in the ratio of 5 is to 4. So W and B are nothing but 5X and 4X, which makes the total 9X over here. If 9X is 450, X is 50. So we get 250 here and 200 over here. Now what is 50% of the black? 50% of this is going to be 100 and both of these are equal. 40% of this will also give you the same, right? It's the same 100 and you get a 200 here. The number of non-metallic balls in the box, non-metallic total is what is asked and that's 450 minus 200 which comes to 250 and that's the answer for this question.